Sightings of UFOs or unidentified flying objects are becoming more widespread apparently. Today's technology with cameras and camcorders means that if you do actually see something, the chances of recording it are extremely high. But what is it that we're discovering? Is it life from another planet? Or perhaps there's a more simple explanation. Well, joining us today is Ananda Sirisena, who's a member of the Society for Extraterrestrial Intelligence and has been studying UFOs for more than 33 years. Also joining us is Dr. Chris French, a psychologist, and a warm welcome back to paranormal expert, Dr. Richard Lawrence. Um, I'm going to start with you first, Ananda. So you've been studying UFOs for all this time. Why, basically? Well, it really started with a personal experience. Mm. Many years ago, I saw three discs in the sky. <laughs> this was in the summer of 1964, the 8th of July, 1964, to be exact. Mm. I was on my way to school couple of my friends and uh, this was just before nine o'clock in the morning a fine sunny morning and we're walking down the road and uh, I spot three discs in the sky and I stop quite amazed at what I'm seeing mm. and my friend the youngest of the two friends said immediately flying saucers so I turned around to him and said well I don't think flying saucers exist but in the next 60 seconds I changed my mind entirely because it was obvious to me that what we were seeing here were not ordinary aircraft. It was not a question of planets or moons or suns under different lighting conditions. What, I, what we were seeing was three disks flying in formation, apparently metallic, perfectly formed circular disks. Mm. And on that day, I became a flying saucer investigator. For 30-odd 30, 30 years? I have been doing that for 30, over 30 years. And but I've spoken it, to many, many people who have seen similar objects in the sky. The problem is, is proving it, isn't it? Well, there are many photographs, there is movie film, there's video clips, there's apparently a lot of trace of uh, landing, there's uh, radar visual sightings, we even have uh, radar plots taken uh, at air bases and so on. Uh, investigators have gone out to where these objects have apparently landed and found uh, different readings of uh, radioactivity and so on. So there is a great deal of physical evidence as well as film evidence and photographic evidence. But it is still evidence in the sense that, from a scientific point of view, uh, evidence is regarded as being distinct from proof. Do you believe in them? Well, I know what you think. Go on, then you tell me what I think. Since well, you're, you're back like, on the show. You're like sort of anything that's vaguely sort of fourth dimensional. You're always really sort of, hey, that's a load of rubbish. And yet you sit there watching the X Files completely glued to it as if it was true. Well, it's entertainment. But do, do people believe the X Files? I mean. Well, no, it's fiction. But it's a reflection of the, the growing belief. There's a phenomenal growing belief in UFOs. And uh, one thing about people who dismiss them and them, they can't stop them coming. And they can't stop See, people you can't seeing them. Stop them coming, Tony. <laughs> but, but, so, Richard, you would say that, because getting down to what UFOs are, because obviously unidentified flying objects, mm -hmm. except there's flying objects. Of course, yeah. What are they then? I believe a percentage of them are extraterrestrial spacecraft. I'm interested in the contacts. I work with a man called Dr. George King uh, in the Ethereum Society, and I found his contacts went way beyond the speculation of just UFOs. I mean, it, you go right back to the Bible, you go to the Hindu scripts. It's something that's been with us through history. I think it has a fantastic bearing on the new millennium. And the implications, if there is life out there, if anyone is in contact with them, mm. Uh, surpass almost everything else. He looks like an intelligent man, doesn't he, Chris? He does. What a patronizing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was We're teasing. We're into the area of patronizing now, I can see. But you know what I mean? A lot of people think it's just pot in the Not so much they? now. No. No. That's old fashioned. But Chris, you're what you would call a skeptic, yeah? Okay. At the moment, I would say, yes, I'm skeptical. I mean, that's not to say that it couldn't ever happen. It's not to say that, I mean, it may even be. I mean, the, the situation is that, I mean, even most serious ufologists, and I'm sure that would have agreement here, would agree that 95% of all sightings have known mundane explanations. Would you agree with that? Not well, the certainly a, that, a yeah. high percentage can be explained. Mm. That is purely because many people do not know the night sky. They do not watch mm. the stars often enough and, and do misidentify Venus, for example, one of the chief culprits. But many people have seen sightings in the daytime of structured craft. But you would say the percentage isn't all, as high as that? I would say not 95%. I, I don't know the exact percentage, I mean, but I agree a high percentage of UFOs aren't extraterrestrial spacecraft, but you only need one. I mean, I and you prove the whole thing. Yeah. What you've done, I mean, what you've got is a situation where you've got 
Nobody would deny that there are things up there in the sky, daytime and nighttime, and we don't know what they are. They are literally unidentified. Mm. Now, the thing is to go for this great inferential leap, that, which every, every serious person ought to accept, to saying we've got evidence there for extraterrestrial intelligence. Now, we need to know what, what's the, where's the link? OK, there are things up there, we don't know what they are. But, I mean, where's the link from that to say, well, these must therefore be indications of... Well, it's a good point. I mean, you have proof. Uh, you you would say you have at, proof. Yes, you? I think you have to look at those people who claim to have had encounters and see whether you believe them. And again, you, you probably won't believe all of them. I don't believe all of them by any means. Presumably, you do believe your uh, Dr. George King. Yeah, he died last year. Who, I do believe. Who yes. actually claimed that there are, there are beings living on Venus. Now, I mean, we know from space probes that the temperature on Venus is 460 degrees C, hot enough to melt lead. So most people, therefore, find that a bit hard to believe. Well, I don't think There's... you really, with all due respect, can speak for Dr. George King and what Are you he disagreeing claimed. with what I've just said? Yes, I mean, he was very precise about the life that he said Did... that was on Venus. He said there was life on Venus. Yes, but he... That's you, all I've you, said. No, you gave the impression that he was saying there was physical life... Uh, now, this is, on, this is on where things physical... get even trickier, because now... Let's not well, get... Let's just... now, boys. Can you shoot this out no, of the bar later? No, but I've made a statement that's untrue, and I must correct no, that. No, no, no. He was very precise on Venus, about... Okay. So you're yeah, but he's... on a right. higher life form uh, than the physical, just like there are people on this Earth who have died, who still exist. So the initial claim was that... You know, the initial impression which would be given by taking George King's claim seriously would be that if you go to, G to Venus, you will find beings there. Now, you could go to Venus no, and not again, find beings No, again, he's very precise. And so you don't want to go by initial dimensions. impressions. But this is Let the problem with this whole yeah. subject, he's isn't never it? Say that at all. Yeah, but don't get um, stuck on Venus. I'm right. actually a member of the Society for Planetary Safety Research, and right. this is based at the University of Tennessee uh, Space Institute. And, and what they're doing there is looking for signs of artifacts on the other planets in this solar system, and indeed our own moon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can assure you that what we've come up with on Mars at the moment is particularly striking. There is evidence of an ancient city on Mars, and I, I, it was not my brief today to bring those pictures to show you today, mm. but I mention it here uh, since uh, Richard and uh, Chris have been discussing Venus. Mm. Mars is also a uh, neighboring planet of ours, and if the evidence is that... Why doesn't everybody know that, then? Why don't we all know Well, that? I'm, I've been talking about this for years in public at conferences Because they're all like espresso. So. They're not giving it a chance for fair air, airing, obviously. At least Blessing. you're giving <laughs> us a fair hearing. You're giving all us the, a fair hearing. All the NASA photographs are publicly available. I mean, there is a, a very well-known photograph of an alleged face on Mars. Now, mm. given the number of pictures that have been taken of Mars, it's not too surprising if occasionally some of the geological structures do look strikingly like a face. Mm. I wouldn't disagree with that. But isn't but it a shame that it's it's not to want to believe it? You don't seem to want to believe it. This, this is not just a face. This is not just a face. Computer enhancement techniques indicate that there are teeth in it's the mouth, mm. there is an eyeball in the eye cavity, so it appears to be a sculptured, but uh, albeit a very large sculpture, of a human-like face. But that is not all that there is. In the same region are uh, pyramidal objects, uh, and in recently there was a statistical study done by Professor Horace Crater uh, on the layout of some of those objects. So and you're suggesting there was civilization? This is what the on photographs Mars. on Mars indicate, mm. but we can't be certain that they're not active today. We don't so know. You, so you, if you talk about UFOs, yes. And the fact they, if we say they really do, or a lot of people will believe, they really do contain extraterrestrial beings. Isn't that terrifying? Actually, that's interesting, because, I mean, I think one thing, if you do believe in UFOs, mm. you believe they're friendly. Well, uh, I, because if they weren't friendly, if they were out to invade us, there'd be no Independence Day. There's no way, you know, mm. Bill Clinton would get up in a jet and defend the world against these craft that can get here. We can't get there yet. Mm. So, I, I mean, they're friendly. I would say they have a long-term game plan going through the Greek legends, South American, African legends. They're here, and they have a very subtle plan, perhaps too subtle for some skeptics. Which is, which which is, is a very strong disagreement to the claims that, you know, people are being abducted, having painful medical experiments carried out upon them. Some of the more dark side type allegations that are coming out of the American ufology movement are in stark contrast to what Richard's course, saying. Yeah. Richard harks back to a kind of earlier contact of around about the 50s, a version which I found much more acceptable. I'm like, now it? neatly but, uh, pigeonholed <laughs> by Dr. No, Chris Brent. No, but there are these historical You always yeah, argue, you too. I mean, will you never we convince usually. each other? We had a nice chat beforehand, though, didn't we? Yeah, well, now we're on. <laughs> Can I ask, is it, I mean, I'm sitting here with, with four fellas, um, but do women tend to believe more than men, or have you any...? Well, in, 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 with respect to the paranormal generally, there is a bias towards women. With, with UFOs, respect to UFOs, yeah, it tends to be men. Men more than women, but there are Although many, the many women... Although tend to be women. Many women who've had sightings. Because, you know this whole obsession with there's various TV programs that I just sort of sort of 
turn off, but he's absolutely gripped to it. How you can not enjoy Star Trek, I just find amazing. <coughs> and the Star it's... Trek technology is, is starting to happen. Mm. And like they're what? very well, for example, the idea of invisible matter, the idea of actually arriving at a destination before you left the first one is being now seriously postulated by that some scientists, nice. some physicists. <laughs> we've, got, <laughs> we've got some footage here of, yes. of, of something you investigated, yes. That is correct. Can you just, before yeah. we see it, us up on it? What, yes, what was the situation? Uh, this is uh, something that happened in Hamel Hempstead on the 7th of February, uh, Saturday gone, uh, just gone. Mm. A family uh, observed a light in the sky and they went out with their uh, video camera. And Which is the point we made earlier, people now have cameras. So can... Indeed, yes. and, and um, uh, I've investigated it, and uh, although my initial reaction was that this may simply be a bright star or a planet, mm. there's a couple of features on that film which are quite interesting, and I'd like to show... OK, well, well, let's, let's, let's have a look, look at it, then. <clears throat> so now, right, if you tell us what we're looking, looking at... The, yeah. the light that's flashing on the right of the screen is the very is the bright light that they saw, and then you will see an aircraft light going by, and for a brief second there you'll see a light come out of the top object and move towards the aircraft. Now uh, th that, that was taken earlier. Then this is the second part of the film. Here we're seeing uh, two lights again. One is obviously an aircraft light and the family were quite clear about that. The flashing could, one. Yes, the flashing light was the aircraft yeah. light. And then we see two lights that move towards each other and then move apart again. Now I, one possible explanation I've uh, put for this is might have been some kind of military exercise going on mm. in the area. This was south southeast of Hemel Hempstead, and uh, we're looking to see whether there was some Air Force activity going on uh, during mm. the evening of Saturday. Is that often Saturday. one of the answers? It, it is certainly one of the some kind of Secret missions. I mean, I'm sure people saw a little glimpse of the stealth bomber when it was being developed, and it was such an odd shaped thing that people would take that as. Well, Why automatically enough, extraterrestrial? Strangely that's... enough, the stealth bomber was, was never photographed by anyone oh, other yeah. than of, at official exhibitions. Mm. That, that just goes to well, show you how, how well, not true. How well uh, uh, a thing like stealth development was kept secret. Mm. There was, a, there was a, the a huge flap in Belgium, for example, which m many ufologists feel may have been test flights of stealth bombers. And no, we don't know, because obviously the military aren't going to say, oh, no. yes, you've caught us out, that was well, our This gets us into equipment. an interesting area. I mean, one thing that, that does strike me on the few of, of the X-Files I've watched is this whole cover Because, mm -hmm. I mean, there are things that are going on on They're Earth that we don't know. Up. Do you think governments are covering? covering Beyond any up? doubt, they've covered up, and they've admitted it. Actually, they admitted it last year. Uh, the, the FBI, the Pentagon covered up. Uh, documents have come out of uh, the CIA, out of the Russian TASS, Soviet TASS, agency, which show many properties beyond stealth bombers. I mean, they, they have the power to disappear and reappear. They Why should they do it? Why bother, though? I mean, what, everybody wants to know that there... There have been admissions that there is a oh, cover-up yes. in terms of covering up military secrets and people reporting sightings which actually were okay, top-secret so test flights. But there reports. have been no admissions from the, the, from the American government that uh, in fact, yes, we do have al aliens tucked away, mm. or in fact, we do have crashed saucers, or, we, or but when people right, start so lying and to admit to lying, is. what can you believe? Yes, and both the British Ministry of Defence and the US uh, Air Force have both stated time and time again that UFOs do not pose a security threat to the nation. Mm. Now, that's an interesting statement. Uh, and I, I wonder what Chris has to say about that oh, statement. An awful lot, <laughs> as you might imagine. What? I mean, with respect to the UFOs, the, I mean, we, we know Nick Pope, who's recently written books on UFOs, and, and is, a, is a believer in these things. He wasn't he's, when he went in, He by was. The way. He's actually... It was his job. It was a single person. It was part-time job. That was the sum total interest of the of the British military in UFO reports. Well, now, for a cover-up of the sun... How do you know that? You don't know that. You don't well, know I've, that I've, at all. I've, I've and interestingly, you should bring up... Well, Nick Pope... Seriously. Well, Nick Pope or actually he is says, an accurate uh, do you know what view Nick of it, Pope and he says? says there was not a cover-up. He says there is a cover-up, and he says that it's a very dangerous problem, which I don't think well, agree with. Well, people can read his book for himself. He does not I he didn't spoke explicitly to him on the that first a day, day that he worked there. He didn't believe in UFOs, and now he's a firm believer, having worked in the Ministry of Defence in the UFO department. He explicitly says it's, there's no cover-up. It's the possible kind that about. Nick Pope is not aware of the higher tier hmm. of well, cover-up. Let, let's not talk just about him, because you, you hear this all over the from different places and about this, there's been a cover-up. And you always get these rumours coming up. I've been reading my Alien Encounter magazine, copies of it. <laughs> rumours. Too sad, eh? <laughs> what a life we lead. You sit there reading. Nina, the editor of that was on here, and she was a very nice lady. So, and she left behind a few copies. 
And there are always these rumours coming up that it's about to be revealed that contact has been made, like that scene in Independence Day, where the answer has now been given to us. Do you think that will ever happen? Richard? Well, there are some very interesting revelations. I mean, it was revealed uh, last year that a man called Sir Peter Horsley, who was a chief of defence staff, a uh, very senior person in the military, was, he, he believes, probably or possibly contacted by an alien, that this alien had advanced scientific, uh, back in 1954, yeah. and he kept it secret until last year. This alien, he says, had advanced scientific information, which proved correct later, mm -hmm. had telepathic powers, and completely revolutionised his whole approach to religion and philosophy forever. We're just about to come to the end of this, but why do we need to think they exist? They do exist, in my opinion, after many years of investigation and talking to people who've seen structured craft that do amazing manoeuvres in the sky, which we're not capable of duplicating. I know you're the sceptic, final yeah. word. Yeah. There's no one answer to why people have a need to believe. It can range from kind of mystical, religious, quasi-religious type viewpoints or simply the kind of technical nuts and bolts that are out there we should know about them. All, uh, and also just kind of what we get from science fiction. I think it's fascinating that they might exist. I mean, I'd be quite happy if they do exist, and I'll keep on watching. Well, you could be happy, happens. because I think the reason they are interested is because it's true. Right. <laughs> I, mean, I hope they do exist, and if they do give us the technology, we finally get, like, a Star Trek transporter. That would be good. Wouldn't holidays become easier? Yeah, it would be excellent. Anyway, it's your turn. To... Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. It's been very helpful to me today. <laughs> Join us after the break when uh, Tony will take a look at some space-age gadgets. Do they actually transport our lives into another galaxy, or do they simply get lost in space?